As a beginning gardener, it can be really confusing starting out. You're really excited so you go to the nursery or any other store with plants and you just start looking around at all the different kinds of plants there are. You pull a tag out of one of the plants and you realize there's a lot of symbols and words that you don't understand. So one of the first things you'll want to know about is your plant name. So your plant goes by several different names. Most commonly, you will use your common name for the plant. This is not specific at all and you could be referencing a multitude of plants with one specific name. To be more specific in your names, you want to use the scientific name. The scientific name is a Latin name that does not change, and so you could be talking with someone across the world, and if you use the scientific name, if they know anything about plants, they'll understand what you're talking about. To be even more specific than that, you'll add the cultivar name to the end of that. The cultivar name is within single quotation marks at the end of the scientific name. A cultivar is a cultivated variety, which means that humans had intervened and selected for certain traits, such as the color of the leaves, the flowers, and other hardiness type of traits. The next thing you might want to know about is the life cycle of your plant. Your plant could be an annual or a perennial. Those are the two most common life cycles. An annual is a plant that grows, reproduces, and dies within one season. A perennial, on the other hand, is a plant that grows, reproduces, and it will live for many different seasons. It will come back year after year, and it will just keep growing until it reaches its mature size, and eventually it will die. Knowing whether a plant is an annual or a perennial is really important in knowing how much space to give it. On your plant label, there will be different measurements. So you might see height, width, or spacing, and each of them will have a different measurement with them. The height and width is the size of your plant whenever it reaches full maturity. So you want to make sure to give it as much space as it requires. So your plant will keep growing and growing, and if you put your plants too close together, then you'll have an increase of pathogens, diseases, pests, and they'll also be competing for other resources and other nutrients. Another term you might see is sun requirements or lighting. There are several different types of terms related to this. You might see a term that says full sun, it's also referenced as sun. This means your plant needs six or more hours of sunlight to be healthy and thrive in the place it's planted. Another term you might see is part sun. This means your plant needs three to six hours of sunlight. It can handle the more intense afternoon sunlight as well. On the other hand, a part shade plant also needs three to six hours of sunlight, but it does not like the more intense afternoon sun. It prefers the morning sun. Another term you might see within that is full shade or just shade. This means your plant would like two or less hours of sunlight each day. You could place it to where it gets two hours of morning sun or underneath a tree where it will have the light filtered through the tree branches. Another term you might see on your plant label is zone hardy to hardiness or anything related to that or a temperature. The USDA created the hardiness zone map. It divided the United States into 13 different zones. Each zone is divided by 10 degree differences. They took the average annual low temperature for each zone. So Oklahoma is in three separate zones zone 6a in the northwest corner and zone 8a in the southeast corner. You might have noticed that I said the letter a after the number. Each zone is further divided into a and b and the difference is that zone a is five degrees cooler than zone b. So Oklahoma, the bulk of Oklahoma is in zone 7. So zone 7a is five degrees cooler than zone 7b. Understanding these basic terms when it refers to plants will give you a good jump start on having a happy and healthy garden. I hope that you gain a little bit more confidence in your plant selections. If you want any more information, check out this fact sheet. Hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussions.